But we say deeper levels, deeper depths. We're after that now in the name of Jesus. Show us the new and the living way. Show us how to marriage most ourselves, yes, yes. Lord God, and now function in that place that you've called us to function in. Yes. We give you praise and glory and honor in advance, yes. even before anything happens. In Jesus' name, we thank you for the live stream audience. Yes, we thank you for the live stream audience and all that's viewing by way of any medium that, Lord, so that they can now hear and see what we're hearing and seeing. We ask that the blessings of heaven be upon them, Lord, that the power and the presence of God that we sense in the room would be with them in the name of Jesus. We thank you so very much for them, Lord. Marriage most of them now. Cause them to walk in a new and a living way as well. We thank you for it. We believe it to be so now in Jesus' name. And all the people said, amen, amen and amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you in his presence. Thank you so much for being here. God bless you. Um, goodness so um, live stream thank you for being here and Facebook live and everybody else that's online church and all of that thank you so very much for being here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ all right so um, let's go right into it I've got so much and if I don't want to get caught like I did last night but um, there is a potential tonight really to get caught um, we're going to tonight um, this is the sixth night of this training um, three more nights to go after this night um, and um, next week is a whole nother level um, um, and um, so I'm hoping to get through most of what I need to get through tonight um, I, 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 but I, I'm really saying right now I know I doubt it I really do I'm just I'm serious it's, I got it's so much here I, I just doubt it but um, we're going to believe God for it. If you're joining us for the very first time, thank you for being here. This is the Marriage Most Training. This is a training that we do every year during our fasting season. We are fasting um, 21 days, Daniel fast, and most churches during this time have some type of fast or doing something to consecrate themselves in the, in the beginning of the year. And so we do it every year. And so this is the sixth year of this training and that we are in and so I take a subject from the year that we have previously previous gone through and ex and just expand on it and and that's what we're doing with the Marismos and so which is soul salvation is really the subtitle to this is to try to get our souls in alignment with God and so if you have not been with us and this is your first night um, go to our website at Bethel oic.church we'll put that in the in the comment section but go there and you can go to our media section and in our media section you can download the soul checkups and there's checkup one and two next week we will have one more checkup of our soul um, um, I don't know tonight but there is a pop quiz tonight so um, hallelujah yeah Look at them, look at them just having all of that, having all that moaning in the house. I don't know. There's a murmuring going in the house and we've been having murmuring ever since we, since we've been doing this. So, so, so again, welcome and welcome and welcome. So please take advantage of those things. Okay. If you missed any of the teachings, you can go and join our YouTube page at Bethel outreach international church the youtube page just join that page subscribe there hit the notification bell and you will know when we upload all of the different youtubes there all of the trainings are out there all five are out there on youtube currently and you can go there you can also get that information by downloading our church app our church app have all of those messages and those things and therefore you can keep up with what we're doing but also get all of the messages that we are also talking about even the Sunday messages and the things that go back beyond that so you probably want to take advantage of all of that so thank you again for being here so let let's enter in um, our foundational scripture is Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 um, there are two foundational scriptures amen, amen. and Hebrews 4 verse 12 come on everybody with me for God for the word of God is quick and it is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword 
piercing even the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit and is and of the joints and the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart and then Genesis 2 and 7 is and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man what? He became a living soul. Okay, so those are our foundational scriptures. What we have also determined from the beginning is that you must take meticulous notes. You must take good notes, but not notes just to be taking notes. You've got to take notes so you can go back and you can study those notes. You should have, um, matter of fact, you should have advanced in this teaching by going back through your notes and going and advancing what we've talked about. If you haven't done that, you're not being a good student. And if you're not doing that, you're not going to develop fruit. Okay? We're moving way past toot. We're moving into fruit, right? And so we're not after that. You can talk about it or tell somebody about it. We want somebody to see it in your life. Amen, somebody. Okay, I want you to go really quick um, as we've been connecting some of these dots um, throughout the time dealing with faith. But if you'll go to Hebrews with me real quick. Hebrews chapter 10. Let's, let's look at Hebrews chapter 10. Let's add something to our, our list of things here. Um, as we start each night this way and we're going to go through several of these for a minute just to deal with this Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38 says now the just how shall the just live the Bible says that the just shall live by faith he says but it says watch this but if any man draw back look at what God says my soul shall have no pleasure in him he says but we, come on, Paul, we believe this is Paul, but the writer of Hebrews, let's we'll say it that way, said, but, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but we are them that believe to what? The saving of the soul. So we believe that the soul is going to be saved. We've already seen that Peter have indicated that the end of our faith, right? A matter of fact, Peter 1 and 9 says, receiving the end of your faith, even what? The salvation of your soul. We believe to the saving of the soul. We also um, understand um, James 1 and 21, right? James 1 and 21 says, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness what the engrafted word which is able now to do what save your soul so now we know how the soul is saved because we also found that out here in the marismos because the word divide asunder in hebrews 4 and 12 is marismos which is where we get our greek word for him for this training but the word of god is quick right and so it is the engrafted word that does what save the soul we, we, we we're going to dive into that but this is really important for us to have this salvation of the soul so we've made this distinction already that there are two salvations right okay and again there are a lot of believers that may not even understand that when you talk to them but there are two salvations there's the salvation spiritually right and then there's salvation of your soul and the salvation of your soul takes work right, right? the salvation of your spirit took a confession okay and a belief in the finished works of Christ and you were saved and that was instant that was free Okay, but to live this thing will cost you something and it calls you your soul local life so that you're not soulish, right? So you understand the difference. The difference is the soul local is the functionality of the soul, the way God made it, the God, way God wanted it. He's not offended by that. That's your personality, your, your, your uniqueness, your distinctiveness. That's all your soul. So we say soul local. But soulish means it is out of order now. Soulish is independent lifestyle, radical, out of order with the, the spirit man, out of order with God and the principles of God. So when we use the two words you know what we're talking about all right those were for the new people that is on to heard this but watch what it says and this is an amazing thing we haven't talked about this much right here it says receive with meekness the engrafted word notice what it says see receive with meekness the word meek there is a word teachable okay so be able to be taught matter of fact meek means to be taught what you know as though you don't know it did you hear you? To be taught something that you already know 
and you act like you didn't know it. <laughs> Therefore, you never say to the person, oh, I know that. <laughs> I got it. I'm good. But you, with meekness, hear it again. Now, how many times have we feel that? <laughs> <laughs> our, our soul does not want anybody to think that it's teaching us something that we already know our soul said no to that I need to let you know my pride rises up right my pride rises up no I'm going to let you know I got this no just, just listen for the meek shall oh my lord come my lord the meek shall inherit the earth these are the teachable ones wow amen somebody my Lord, my God. I just, just realized something. I talked about, you know, the man cave last night, and I done run past the brig from the front row all the way to the back. Pastor Briggs just done, I understand, but it just ran him away from me. You know, brother just ran away from me. Praise God. Come on, Pastor, Pastor Lewis. That brother just left me, man. He offended his soul or something. <laughs> All right, I want you to go real quick with me to Psalms 35. I want to show you something. Show you a couple of, a couple of verses. Deal with the salvation of the soul. The soul has to be saved, right? Okay, Psalm 35 and 9 says, um, matter of fact, man, I tell you what. Mm, mm, mm. Pastor Briggs, since you're back there doing security, could you get my bag out of my office, please? My, it's on the floor. Why is this? And it says, and my soul, verse 9 says, and my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his what? Salvation. It shall rejoice in his salvation. My, my soul, come on, shall be joyful in the Lord. Matter of, fact, matter of fact, write this down because we said it last night. I said it quick and I don't know if you grabbed it. Um, is, but all of the emotions of your life is connected to your soul. Okay? So mind, will, and emotions makes up your soul. Mind, will, and emotions. So joy and all that kind of stuff is by way of your soul. Is that right? The joy of the Lord is your strength. Come on, amen? All right? Now, now what I was going to show, what I'm showing you, this is interesting, the reason why I got my, my thing here, this is, this, I want to show you, see, th see, see this right here? See, this is pretty thick, isn't it? Pretty thick, okay? I think about 31 pages or so. I think that's what it is. All of these are the, all of the scriptures on the soul in the Old Testament. This is no New Testament stuff. This is all the, in, this is all the scriptures on the soul from the Old Testament. God is serious about the soul. And the reason why he was so serious then, because their spirit was not alive. So when David says, why are thou so downcast? So why are thou so downcast in me? He had to deal with his soul. He couldn't deal with his spirit. Because he wasn't born again. Are you with me? And so when you read this stuff from David, um, you know, matter of fact, this is pretty neat too. There's about 11 pages of notes on faith. Just faith. You, 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 are, are you, okay, you see? You, you understand? I'm not just preaching to you. I'm not just trying to give you information I'm, I'm, I'm eating so that I can give to you what are y'all with me here so now watch go to 62 and 1 come on go to 62 and 1 watch this G grab grab what your soul is doing in these verses he says that my soul shall be joyful in the Lord and shall rejoice in the, his salvation and you watch it 60, 62 and 1 truly my soul what waiteth upon God look at that from his coming, from it, from him cometh my salvation. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that good? It says, My soul waiteth upon God. I'm waiting on him. I'm waiting on him. So your soul has to wait when, and we'll talk about it in a moment why that is important. Come on, go to Psalms 119 and 81 and jump here real quick. Um, um, and 81, it says, My soul, watch this. This is this is amazing. It says, My soul fainteth. For thy salvation, but I hope in thy word. Did you? Uh, that, ain't that good stuff? Yes. Come on, I'm just adding some scripture to you, to your, to your arsenal right here. Come on, jump over, jump down into Isaiah 61 and 10. Watch this, Isaiah 61 and 10. 
And it says, I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bride decks himself, bridegroom decks himself with ornaments and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. Look at that. My soul again is rejoicing in joy in the salvation of God. Amen. So your salvation, you are saved. Your salvation based on what the, the psalmists are saying is that you're showing the joy of that salvation from your soul. It is through your soul that you show people how, how, how happy you are about the things of God. Are, are you with me? How much joy is in your life about the things of God? Okay. Sadness then is also in the soul. Okay. So sadness and worry and frustrations are all a part of what? The soul. The soul is all a part of the soul. It is so salvation that we need so watch this Luke 21 look at look at Luke 21 Luke 21 and 19 look at what it says in your patience possess ye your souls did you hear that Luke 21 and 19 that's good right in your patience possess ye your soul my Lord so now let, let me ask you this question this is really good right here how many of us Possessing our souls. Because how do you possess it? In patience. Are, are we patient? James said, if you're patient, he said, if you learn patience and you have patience in your life, you're controlling every other part of your life. James said, every part of your life is being controlled if you're impatient, if you're having patience, if you're in patient, not impatient, in patience. If you have patience, he says, you're controlling your life. So most people are not in control of their life because they don't have enough patience. I was, um, I was playing, um, um, recently I, I've been, recently I was playing chess. And I've been playing a lot of chess just, just to keep my mind sharp and all that and to think ahead. And I was playing chess and I was in this situation and I'm playing the computer and, and, and I can't, and, I'm, and for some reason I can't be patient. I'm, I'm, a, I'm ahead. I've got him trapped. I've got him every kind of way which to go. And before I knew it, I had lost the game. Why had I lost the game? I got impatient. I got impatient. I'm trying to do it too fast. I'm trying to move too fast. And the computer is definitely patient, just waiting for me to make the wrong move. And when I did, it was like three moves was made. And I'm going, this don't make any sense. Because I was winning the game. See, we can win at life. And all of a sudden, Come on. it can switch on us because we move from patience to impatience and our soul got out of place ah, already, I'm already better than y'all amens I tell you that so, so, so now so, so now this scripture about patience is a very important scripture because it's very easy to become impatient with the process of the soul transformation it's real easy hear me good to want this faster than you supposed to get it. Yes, sir. And you become impatient and you now try to make it happen rather than use the word of God so that it can happen. Yes. Okay? Yes. All right? <laughs> so, so, we, so my whole deal is you must understand that you can't use your will to fix your will. <laughs> <laughs> And you can't transform your mind by your mind. Now you hearing me? You can't use your will to fix your will and you can't transform your mind using your mind. Can't do it. Can't do it. So as we indicated on last evening or whenever I said it, I don't know now, it all run together. I, <laughs> I wanted you to get what? Three scriptures that deals with the area of need in your life. 
And what are we going to do? We're going to do James 1 and 21. Okay, I'm going to give you a key, y'all. I'm going to give you a key right now on how to do James 1 and 21. What is James 1 21? Huh? Oh, you want you, you, you see that? See. So, 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 how? Come on, tell me how. What is James one twenty one? Okay, so we are talking about what? So what are we talking about right there? We just quoted it for earlier. You know what the engrafted word? So I'm going to teach you right now how to engraft a word. Is that okay? Okay, and then and then you're going to see a process to have a matter of fact. Matter of fact, so this is what I need you to do. Okay, this is what I need you to do. I need you to find how many scriptures I tell you to find. I need you to find three scriptures that deal with your situation. You need to, you should know where they are based on December 31st. Hello, body of Christ. What happened on December by December 31st? We made a list of things that we wanted to get out of our life. Hello, that's what you were supposed to do. (laughs) <laughs> that those were your instructions. Let me let me put it that way. Okay? So if you did that, if you did that, now you know what you need to work on. Yeah. Hello. If you were honest with yourself, you wrote down in your list, these are things that I need to fix. A- amen? amen? And you use you use what? The 11th commandment. Thou shalt not lie to thyself. What good is that? Come on, amen? Amen. Okay, so now, watch. You didn't lie to yourself. You wrote it down. Now, this is what I want you to get. So, if you got the... So now, you pick out the one that you really need to deal with. Okay? And you write down... You find three scriptures. How do you do those? You go in the back of the concordance and go the opposite of what you're dealing with. The opposite of what you're dealing with is what you're trying to find. Are you with me? The opposite of what you're dealing with is what you're trying to find. Okay, because you want to engraft the opposite into your life. Amen. And so what you're going to do with the three scriptures you find. Everybody good. I want you to write it down in the morning three times. I want you to write down three times the three scriptures. I don't want you just reading them. I don't want you typing them. Listen to the instructions well. I don't want you typing them. I don't want you just reading them. I want you writing them. Okay? Why am I asking you to write them? Right, right. The more senses you use, the better you retain. And when you put hand to pen and paper... You retain better by writing them. Okay, are you 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 got that? Okay, okay. So you can try to you can try to skip around me and not listen, and then come back and tell me it didn't work. But if you do what I tell you, it's gonna work. So midday, you're gonna write those three scriptures six times. Okay. So in the morning, you're gonna write them three times. In the noon or midday, somewhere, you're going to write them down six times. Got it? Before you go to bed, you're going to write those same three scriptures nine times. Got it? When you finish the ninth time, you're going to stop and you're going to now, for the first time in the day, think on them. Meditate on them. For about five minutes, that's all I need from you. Maybe three minutes. You don't even may have to go five minutes. But three minutes, three to five minutes, you're going to take and you're going to spend time with those three scriptures for about three to five minutes. Are you with me there? Yes. You're going to just think on them real deep. You're going to do this for 60 days. Did you catch me? If you do this, uh, yeah, why y'all groaning and moaning in here? Jesus. <laughs> You're going to do this for 60 days. Listen to me. Uh, watch this, okay? You're only at this point going to, watch this, you can only take the one thing and deal with it. 
You're not going to take three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things because you can't handle that. All right. Once you learn the one, you have capacity to expand. You follow me? You have already built a pattern as well and a habit of doing this on a daily basis. Here is your caveat though. This is your problem. This is going to be your issue. So here is your soul issue. The day you miss, you start over. <laughs> that's, your, that's your soul issue. If you miss a day, you start at one. Now listen to me close. The other thing you must do, okay, this is my introduction. I love this half hour introduction every night. The half hour introduction is a little hard for us sometimes, ain't it? But watch this. You need somebody watching over your suke, which is your soul. You need to uh, be accountable to somebody about this assignment. Because when you miss that day, it is too easy to say, I ain't doing this no more. <laughs> Hello? Yes. It's too easy. It's too easy to go, okay, I tried. It ain't worked for me. You need somebody to go, no, come on, let's get up, get up. The righteous fall seven times. But each time the righteous get up every time. So you're going to get up and you're going to do this again. Call me tomorrow when you're doing it. Hello? Wow. <laughs> I know it's a lot. What is it dealing with? The soul. Yeah, that's the only thing that is dealing. That's the only thing it's dealing with. Your spirit is jumping up inside right now. Yes. Your, your spirit is going woohoo, woohoo. Your soul is going. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Yeah. Why would you stop? Wait a minute. Let me ask you this question. Since since what would you delay? What would what would delay you? What would what don't you want to change? That's right. Okay. Now, so if your will can't change your will, nor your mind can transform your mind. And there is nothing watch this, there is nothing you can do to transform yourself. Amen. The only thing that can change you is the engrafted word. And the word that is sharper than any two-edged sword. And if that's the only thing that's going to change you, you need to immediately start using, systematically using, skillfully, the sword. Yes. So now you use it in any area you want to use it. I would say this. If you have health issue, start there. Don't start with money if you got a health issue. Because why, why would you want all the money and you can't even spend it? <laughs> that doesn't make sense, would it? Yeah. No, if you got a health issue, start with health. Don't start with anything else. Amen? Amen. You'll be able to get to that soon enough. Amen. Amen. Now, for those of you who tend to get up early in the morning, this is going to help you a great deal. The reason why it's going to help you a great deal because you up before day anyway. So your your first three is real easy. Yes, that's why I'm You see, but for me again, my midday, my midday is actually way before eleven o'clock because I'm up at three thirty. Yeah, I know that's right. You see, while you sleeping, I'm up. Last night, last night I was up at two. That's yes, right. Everything's yeah. It's just before you, you your evening is before you go to bed. Yeah, well, you can do it even. No, no, you can do it. You can do it in, in the evening. It doesn't. You don't have to. It ain't, you don't have to be in the bed doing it. Yeah, do it whenever you got it. You come on. You you follow? Make it work for you. The main thing we're after is three, six, and nine. That's what we're after. Three, six, and nine every day. So you got a total. Come on, help me. How many we got? Y'all didn't do the math fast. 18. Jesus, help me, Lord. Three, six, and nine is 18. Okay. I know we have math. Lord, help me. Okay. Three, six, and nine is 18. 18 is a number for life. Okay. 
Okay, so you should have known that for my 18th anniversary, but you don't forget. But <laughs> 18 is the number for life. So what is going to happen is life is going to now be manifested in your life. Okay, through the word of God. Am I, hell, matter of fact, man, somebody out there giving an offering or something for, I just change your life. Glory to God. Are you with me? Okay, so how many days you going to do this? If you miss a day, what are you going to do? Stop. She said 30. You going to have to call her. I'm going to have to call her personally. Let me drink some Krispy Kreme. That's a good donut right there. So, watch. Third John 1 and 2, go. Oh man, so much. Help me, Father, to get here tonight, please. Please, Lord, help me. Help me, help me, help me. Help me. I got so much. That's why I went into worship tonight before we started, so I could be ready. Third John 1 and 2 says, What? Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and beware. Even how? As your soul prospers. Now, prosperity in health is, di is in direct relationship to the prosperity of your soul. Listen to me close. Prosperity in health is directly related to, I know this is salutation, but it's in the word of God for a reason. It is directly related to your soul. As your soul prospers, your health prosper. As your soul prosper, your finances and your increase prosper. Everything about you prospers based on your soul. So I don't need to deal with health necessarily. I don't need to deal with trying to prosper necessarily. I need to prosper my soul myself if I can prosper my soul everything else will come into alignment with my soul prosperity wow. the reason for that is it now will cause me to think different yes. the transformation of my mind will cause me to think different yes. I now will think different. but watch this listen most of what you deal with is how you think yes. as a man Help me think is where in his heart so is he think in your heart you become what did we find out last year hello somebody come on what we were dealing with the matters of the heart right what did we find out about the heart last year neuro neurotransmitters about 40 to 50,000 of them are found where in the heart. So we found out that that scripture was not just a theoretical type of scripture or a spiritual scripture. It also had to do with that my heart, my heart does think. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. So as a man think is in the heart. And what did we find out? That the heart thinks more than the brain. Yes. Which most people don't know. <laughs> that more information is leaving my heart and going to my brain than is coming from my brain coming to my heart. We also found out last year that the heart is formed before the brain. <laughs> and that by that, my Lord, all of that neuro stuff was in the heart before the brain ever got it. Billions of transmitters are in the brain. But, but not communicating more than the heart is to the brain. So as a man thinketh in his so therefore, watch this. This is key. This is key. My thinking in my heart will bring forth what I want. That's where my faith is. Wow. Did you hear what I just told you? My faith is connected in this heart of mine. That's where the unbelief is. So when I think wrong, I'm going to get wrong. That is right. That's right. Amen. So watch now. So you got to understand. So we we listen. <laughs> is what I said last night. I don't know if many people know what negative thinking actually is, <laughs> because they excuse themselves when they do it, and they defend the fact that they did it. <laughs> so they don't know that it is hurting them. Wow. Amen. But as you think. You become. Yes. That's good. Yes. 
So when you think on your finances, how far can your brain go? <laughs> think about that for a moment. When you think about your finances, your brain only go your, your brain goes a certain place, but your heart only goes a certain place too. You only go so far. Even when you think about prospering financially, you don't go to millions, you stay in thousands. I'm preaching better than y'all responding. Man, I'm helping y'all tonight. Y'all got to get this. You, you stay in thousands. You don't go to millions. Your, your heart can't get there. You know why? Because your soul has told you you, can, you don't belong there. And that's the data from the old guy. And I told you, that's the data from your parents, your grandparents, your grandparents, because the whole lineage has been suffering. Your whole lineage, you look at your whole lineage, ain't nobody rich. Mm -hmm. That's right, that's right, amen. Nobody. Mm -hmm. So when you look back, <laughs> when you look back and you see nobody rich, your conclusion is, I can't be rich either. And when your parents treated you in a certain way and when you were growing up as though you were poor by not letting you go in certain rooms of the house not letting you sit on certain furniture I'm talking better than y'all responding I mean this old time religion right here ain't it come on come on come on but, but come on and all that kind of stuff by, by knocking your feet off of the furniture because you put it up there like they can't get another sofa don't get that right. Don't sit on that good furniture. So there's good furniture and bad furniture in a room that you can't go in but once a year. Yeah. That's got plastic all over it. Ain't nobody help me. Now we've taken the plastic off, but we still got the room. Oh, oh, oh my God. We took the plastic off. We said that was, that was stupid, but we still got the room. Don't go in there. What you doing in that room? Yes, bedroom. Don't go in there. <laughs> yeah, don't look at the. Don't mess with the china. Don't put that china. Put it. Use paper plates. I don't mind paper plates. We use paper plates. I ain't had no problem with a paper plate. Glory to God. Glory to God. But come on, you come on. If china is what rich people would eat off. What kind of what kind of china do they have in heaven? Hmm. Ain't no paper plates in heaven, bro. Yeah. So come on, think about this for a second now. You are from heaven, but you you don't act like it. Because your your mind won't let you go there. Your mind won't let you go there. Your mind won't let you go there. And then if you start advancing, somebody come on because your soul gets out of line a little bit with this but then they'll start telling you you think you're too good for us uh -huh. oh y'all ain't hearing me yes, sir. you think you up you up at it you 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 one of them I can't say it on camera what they would call us in the hood because some people out there may not understand but, but they would call us up at it right but they add something to it you know what I'm talking about yeah <laughs> Yeah, but now they yeah, now they done gone bougie and all that kind of stuff and so who who do you think you are? And now we get what? Crabs in the basket mentality. So the other crabs that can't get nothing, they never had nothing, don't want you to ever get nothing. Right. Don't want you to ever have anything. Come on, are you, are you, uh, am I talking to the right folk at all? Okay, okay. And so you functioning from a lack mentality. You're not functioning from a prosperity mentality. So your soul isn't prospering. If your soul isn't prospering, then the rest of your life can't prosper. You don't know your soul is hindering your health. For the mercy of Jesus. My God. You can't even think right. What you want the Bible says what? Let every man be a liar. But let what be true? You better talk to me loud in here. I said and tell what be true. The word, of God. the word of God. Let the word of God that is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword be true. The engrafted word is able to save your soul. Be true. Hallelujah. The one who is the word who came full of grace and truth. Be true. <laughs> Go 
Your soul can cause you to be sick or well. We know this by the um, the fact that I can give you a pill that is not even a pill. Huh? A placebo, yeah. I can give you a pill that's not even a pill and heal you. If I convince, if I convince you that the medication I'm about to give you is going to heal you and I give you a sugar pill that doesn't have any medication in it whatsoever, you become healed not because there was medicine, but because your mind is able to heal your body. Jesus. Jesus. So if my mind is able to heal me, because I took a pill that I thought was in, then I don't need the pill. If I learn how to make this mind work in the way that it's supposed to work under the unction of the Holy Ghost. By the power of God. Not because I'm doing it from mental will worship though. Because I can do the same thing. I can heal myself using the same methods but not be connected to God. If I do it out from under God, it becomes a witchcraft mentality and becomes sorcery and soothsaying. But if I do it under God, it is the way that he calls it to function. So the enemy uses it against us because we don't know who we are. Yes. Which is why we marry most in ourselves. Yeah. So that my spirit is now governing every part of my soul. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Everybody with me. Yeah. Come on. Go. <laughs> so now Romans 12 and 12 and 2 becomes clear, doesn't it? Yeah. See? And be not conformed to this world. Yeah. Why? This will bring death to the soul and cause it to be entangled in its cares. <laughs> be not transformed to this world you can't think about the world system what, what, what did Paul tell the Philippians think on what these things he lists the things I want you to think on is anything in there negative no. so why did he tell you what to think on because that, that thinking he knows will prosper the soul and prosper your life You get negative information, you can't you can't hardly keep it. Why? Because you you're thinking on it all day. Negative information. You just thinking on it. You can't you can't you can't wait to tell somebody. Wow. And you won't you won't manage your soul. Why? This negative information is not prospering me. Matter of fact, it's not my business. Therefore, don't share it. Don't give an inference of it. And don't even bring it back up to me. Oh. <laughs> my Lord. Let me, have, let me go. <laughs> With you. Let me do with some of y'all that are singers. Oh. And they say, oh Lord, oh they're moaning and stuff. Yeah. You singers, this ain't bad. Those of you that are singers, you many of y'all know if you're a singer or a musician or something like that. You ever got that song stuck in your head? And that rascal won't go nowhere, you wake up with it. You go to sleep with it. And it's just bugging you. You're not singing it. But as you going along, that music just playing in your head. Yeah. Just playing that thing, play anytime. So who's playing the music? <laughs> Come on, help me. <laughs> Who, <laughs> who's playing the music? Because you don't have any music on, nor are you trying to get the music. To, you're not thinking about it, but the song's playing. <laughs> and before you know it, you're singing it. Yeah. Come on, you're singing it. Come on. But how in the world? Who's playing the music? And even you say, I don't want, I don't want to be listening to this anymore. And it won't stop. It just keep playing the same song. And you go to sleep, and you wake up, and the song is playing in your head again. Am I, come on, am I talking to the right people? I'm trying to get you free tonight, man. Who, who playing this song? See, again, you see, until you understand this, you don't even understand that you're triune. Lord, have mercy. Wow. 
Wow. He can understand you're triune. You're triune based on the fact that somebody else is something that's playing a song in your head that you didn't tell to play. Mm-hmm. Wow. Huh. And I, so, because <laughs> I love music and all that, I had on, uh, I had on, I had on a station or something. I went on my car, I turned the station, I turned it away from all the craziness, and I turned it on, I think I put on, um, 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 Smooth, the smooth jazz station or something. I just wanted to hear some. I didn't want to hear no. I didn't want to hear no singing. I just wanted to hear some, some, some instrumental. And I just put that on over there. I just okay. Let me ride with that. And then um, somebody came on there singing. <laughs> I was going not going for singing, but then came singing. And the, and look at it. Look at this time. Oh Jesus, I am not. I, help me, Father. And then and and the, and the, so the, so the, so the girl. Um, um, was singing in a whole nother way George Benson's Give Me the Night. Oh, yeah. And he, she was singing it in a jazz way that was serious. I said, my goodness, this is nice. But it was not long <laughs> before I was away from the song now. <laughs> In my soul, when the darkness falling, I said, "Oh Jesus!" And <laughs> so, give me the night. I was, "Oh Jesus, get it, get it out of here, Lord!" Just give me the night. I said, "Okay, oh, just give me the night." <laughs> Oh my God, George done got me. Oh, the girl got me. You see, she got me. Which is why you gotta be, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be careful. In God, the soul, because the soul will attract so easily. And so I'm at the gas station pumping the gas, and now I went. <laughs> I went to whistle this thing. Say, oh Jesus, help me! Because <laughs> I was stuck. Until I said to him, "Do it again." Let's play a little game here, sir. Since you want to sing that song. I'm going to give you the fast. <laughs> see, why? Because, see, even though we're in Daniels, there's another level to go, isn't it? Yes. So, wake me up singing it again. <laughs> Let me go to sleep and hear you singing it in the background. Let me, let me be whistling it and not realize I was whistling it. And you're going to just go on about three, four days. No food. Oh. Not any Daniels. Uh-oh. Guess what ain't happened yet? <laughs> Come on, talk to me. Guess what has not happened since I made this proclamation to myself? I ain't heard it. I brought it up right now and it still didn't want to sing it. <laughs> and I'm the one that's doing it now. I'm telling you the story. But he, he was like, no, I don't want to do that right now. <laughs> you, you, you think I'm joking You got to feel this inside I cannot believe I'm on the second page Oh Lord Jesus oh my God. So be you transformed by the what? Renewing. Renewing of your mind This allows the soul to function in the freedom And increase that God created it to live in This transformation The renewing of the mind That you may do what? What are you going to do by this? Prove something You prove what? Good. The good and acceptable and what a perfect what perfect what come on come on come on will of God what why did I come from heaven to do the will of the one who sent me and I need to know his good that's the triune area good perfect good acceptable and perfect of the triune man body soul and come on body soul and spirit come on y'all y'all got that 
So therefore, the marriage modes, therefore, through the marriage modes, we should be identifying the areas that need to be changed and advancing our spirits to take the oversight. Pop quiz. You can answer them in your heart. How are you doing with your opinions? How do you, how are you doing with your unbelief? How are you doing with your debating? <laughs> how are you doing with your rebellion? <laughs> how are you doing with your anger? How are you doing with your eating? How are you doing with your Bible reading and study? How are you doing with being a self-starter? How are you doing with your schedule? Hmm. How are you doing with money management? How are you doing with the things you fear? And how are you doing with setting aside time alone with God? You see, that's your pop quiz based on what we've already asked you. That you should be working on already. The question is, how are you doing with those things now? Are they in front of you? Or was it just a checkup and you gone on about your business? You see? Because the thing that's easy for humans and the soul is to get used to something fast. Right. Amen. See, the longer we go in this, the easier for you to get used to it and not move, not transform, not change anything. I'm used to it now. Now it becomes terminology, information rather than revelation that takes you to manifestation. And what you can never allow yourself to do is to get used to this. You got to go, no, I'm not going to get myself used to it. No, I'm going to be changing. I'm going to work on all this stuff. I'm, I'm almost ready to start for the night. I want you to think about the fact that God came here through his son Jesus to show man how to be reconnected to him and live the abundant life and that he would pay the debt man accrued through the disobedience and broken fellowship Jesus paid opening up in an entire new pathway an entire new pathway an entire new pathway this is what you need to know an entire new pathway a new way of living he destroys the old he destroys the old way of living and everything attached to it so go to go with me to st john chapter 10 come on which will take us back if you will remember all the way to sheep training st john chapter 10 and the first the first training was sheep training Right? Okay. And we did sheep training one and two. Glory to God. Okay. So, all right. You, you ready? Yes. Look at what it says. Verse one. Let's walk through this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way. Excuse me. The same is a thief is as a what? That's two, that's two different things right there. We'll talk about that in a moment. Is a thief and a robber. There are two ways to enter though. That verse, verse one tells you there are two ways to enter. There are two ways to enter. One is by the door. The other is to climb the fence. Okay? There are two ways to enter. One by the door, the other by the fence. If you will allow me to now expand this understanding a little bit, let's say that the door is the spirit. But let's say climbing a fist is the way of the soul. Okay, are you with me so far? The two ways is that, okay? Now watch, now watch. But he that enters by the door is who? Is the shepherd of the sheep. And this is verse two, y'all following in St. John chapter 10. 
Okay, come on. Is the is the shepherd of the sheep? Notice how the shepherd enters. How does the shepherd come in? By the door. So then we could say that the shepherd enters in by way of the spirit. Okay, you notice that. So the shepherd comes by way of the spirit, by way of the door. But the thief and the robber climbs over the fence, which is the soul. Okay, are y'all with me? Okay. Now watch verse three. To him, to who? Who's him? Verse 3, who's to him? What's the him? The shepherd. Come on, come on, stay in the context. Follow along. To the shepherd, if you will, the porter openeth. And the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and he leadeth them out. Now notice, we understand something. We are the sheep who hears his voice and follow him. Okay, right? Yes. Come on, he doesn't follow the sheep. Get this, he doesn't follow the sheep. He entered in by way of the door. He calls the sheep, they follow him. He doesn't follow them. So the sheep knows his voice. What voice are they hearing? The shepherd who entered in by way of the door, which is the spirit. So then the sheep, us must hear by way of the spirit. Are you with me? Okay, you, are, you, are you tracking? Trying to take this slow so you don't miss anything. Verse 4, and when he put it forth his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. Everywhere that we are told to go, this is amazing. Watch, every, so we're hearing his voice spiritually, but everywhere we are told to go, this is what this verse says to me, everywhere, every assignment given, everywhere we're told to go, the Lord goes first. Yes. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. And because he is there, then we must listen to his voice and now follow and not follow another voice. Yes. So wherever God is sending you, he's sending you because he's already been there. Yes. Come on. What assignment he's given to you, he's already done the assignment. I got scripture for this. Yes. I can give you scripture for this. So he will tell you, he won't tell you to do anything that he hasn't already led you in. Because wow, because you're not leading him, but that's the way of most of the church. That's right. Most of the church think they can tell God what to do. Come on, <laughs> man, I'm talking good stuff. Okay, so now watch this in verse five. He says, "And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him." Did you notice that? For they know not the voice of strangers. So if you can see that the stranger's voice is related to anything and anyone other than the shepherd, therefore the soul isn't to be listened to or followed. Amen. Did you hear that? Yes, sir. Oh, come on, get that for me. Wow. So if the if the if he if we're not listening to any other voice other than the shepherd, and the shepherd came by way of the door, and the shepherd is by way of the spirit, the only thing we're listening to is our spirit man. Yes. We're not listening to the dicta dictates of our soul. Yes. So when your soul says, do this, that, or another, you say, I don't listen to you. Yes. Matter of fact, I run from you. Yes. Don't speak to me that way. You do what I say. I don't do what you say. That's right. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. That's difficult. Let me tell you something that's really difficult. Yes. Because your soul is really smart and cunning. I'll tell you about that hopefully in, before we leave. Uh, y'all, y'all tracking so far? Okay, good. Look at verse six. Really important verse. Really important verse. We're going through most of this chapter. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they what? understood not what things they were which he spake unto them he was telling them basic see this is exactly what he told Nicodemus he says how can I tell you earthly things and you not believe he said if you don't believe when I tell you earthly things how are you going to believe when I tell you spiritual things he's using natural um, example here with a shepherd and all of that isn't he yes. okay okay watch 
Then Jesus said unto them, aren't you, aren't you happy if Jesus is patient? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. How many of y'all been and kicked these disciples a long time ago? <laughs> Got you 12 more. Said, look, I'm fine. Oh, y'all, I'm going to find me 12 more. <laughs> That's right. Come on. Women say he should have got 12 women. <laughs> so, so, so this parable spake Jesus, spake um, Jesus to them, but they understood not. He says, what things were that he spake unto them. And then Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Did you hear that? Yes. I am the door of the sheep. So we could say the way into the spiritual realm is through. Yes. Ah, come on, somebody. Through Jesus. I think this is a major important. This is what I really do. I really do. Why? Because St. John chapter 14, verse 6 tells us something. Same to John chapter 14 verse 6 says what? Jesus said unto them, this is chapter 10. But 14 he says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. We're from the rich, ooh, come on. The way is the gate. The way is the gate of the tabernacle. The way is not the door. This is really important. What? The way is the gate. Then what is the, what is the door? The tent of meetings. The door of the tent of meetings, which is the tabernacle I'm talking about. So the gate into the court is the way. But the truth, Jesus came full of grace and truth, didn't he? So the door is truth. So the door is truth. So to enter into truth, I must enter in by Jesus. Y'all with me? Okay? Matter of fact, Jesus said in just dealing with the gate, he said in Matthew chapter 7 verse 14, he says, what? Um, because, the, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which lead is unto life. It leads to life. It's not life. The gate was the way to life because you had the way, the truth, and the veil becomes the life. So the gate leads to life, but the gate isn't life. But it's still narrow. And he said, few be there, few be, few there be that find it. Right? Now, watch this. So, verse 8 of St. John chapter 10, verse 8. Are y'all getting this with me? Okay? We got a little more time. The Lord is helping me with the time tonight. I see him. I, be I believe he's helping me. Watch this. All that ever came before me. Notice what he says now. All. Can you please underline, circle in your Bible, highlight on your phone, highlight however you do it. All. All that did what? Okay, so these, so if they came before him, they are people. Hello. This can be spiritual, he's talking. All that ever came before me, what are they? I can hear you. What are they? Thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not what? Hear them. Now, listen. Listen, don't go ahead of me now. Very important. All that came before me were thieves and robbers. We're headed somewhere deep into this chapter. We get a, we get clarity like a rascal about our transformation of the soul and the marriage most. It's in here. It's an amazing thing that is in here. But watch what I'm telling you. Those are two separate different people. Thieves and robbers are separate people. Thieves take from you when you don't know it. Right, right. Okay? A thief takes from you when you don't know it. That is, that, come on, that, that relative that come to your house. <laughs> Y'all, come and help me somebody. And, and everybody know, you know, you know they steal now. You know they steal. You know they steal. You better put your stuff away. If you don't want it to disappear, you better put it away. Y'all don't have none of them relatives. You know they steal. Now you know they steal. <laughs> Live stream, y'all don't have no relatives like that. Bless the Lord for y'all. Praise, praise God. So, a thief, you find out that the stuff is gone. 
after the thief is gone. Is that, is that how that works? Okay, so you had 20 sheep, and you come and you count them, you got 18. And you go, where the two sheep? When they leave, when do we lose them? Somebody stole them. That's different than a robber. A robber forcefully takes from you what's yours. Did you hear what I just told you? Oh my Lord. Which is why Malachi is an amazing scripture even though it doesn't apply to us. It says, will a man rob God? Didn't say, will a man steal from God? Didn't say, will a man steal from God? He said, will a man forcefully take from God what belonged to God? Oh, wow. Robbery. See, the bank robber, come on, come on, went into the thing with guns are blazing yeah. and they robbed the place and people are fearful for their life and it's forceful. The thief, the person that steals from the bank comes in at the nighttime, ain't nobody there. They are thieves. Jesus says, everybody who ever came before me to the sheep were thieves and robbers. Two different people. Are y'all getting this? Okay, good. Now, he says, now watch. He says, but now, let me ask you this question. Because he doesn't tell you this though. But how does the thieves and robbers end the end? Over the fence. The thieves and robbers are coming by way of the soul. So if you see the soul as this process, then your soul is stealing stuff from you. And you don't even know it's gone until you're looking for it. But then there are times when your soul forcefully take what belongs to you. Wow. So that you can't have it. Wow. Man, I'm preaching better than y'all getting this. Man. You got to get this, man. You got to get this, man. Wow. Two different ways it's functioning. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Y'all here? Yes. Come on, watch this now. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Jesus says this in verse 9. He says, I am the door. By me, if any man does what? Enter in. How's he entering? By the door, therefore he's entering in into by way of the spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you, y'all. He shall be what? Ah, then you are saved. How? By the spirit first. That's what he's dealing with. You're saved by the first. Because this word that he used was saved is G. Listen to this. 4962. Write it down. G4962. And is the word sozo. It is sozo. It is your complete self. It's your spirit, your soul, and your body. So Paul said to the Thessalonians, I would that your whole spirit, your whole soul, your whole body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Which again tells you of your triuneness. Okay, so here, this word sozo, he says, if you enter in, you will be sozoed. That means every part of you. So he's dealing with not only your spirit, he's dealing with the transformation of your soul as well. Wow. Wow. Because you entered in by the spirit. Because the only thing that's going to help do this is your spirit man connected by the Holy Spirit and is being using the word of God skillfully to now put you in line. Wow. Yes. Mm. Wow. Hallelujah. Everybody here. Yes, sir. Now watch this. Look at what he tells them will happen when they enter into salvation. He says, and go in and out and find what? Pastor, once we are saved, we will increase and find what is needed no matter where we are. No matter where we find ourselves, we can prosper. There is no, you can drop me off in the Sahara Desert and I'm going to build a city. Yes, yes. That's good. That's good. Good word. Why? I can't, I can't fail. St. <laughs> John chapter 10 verse 10 Now here we come Watch The thief cometh not Stop with those so, See that Who has already been identified as thieves Yeah and In this passage he's talking Those who what Came before him came before him. Is that right? Then how do we get this so messed up in this verse? 
Why do we immediately move from what Jesus is talking about and those who came before and immediately interject the devil? <laughs> How does the devil get in here? There, there is no way the devil gets in here. He's not, he hasn't been talking about the devil yet, has he? Come on, have he? Who is he talking about? He's talking about our soul, but he's also talking about what? Those who came before him, and he called them what? Thieves and robbers. He said, all of them that came before me, they, these are people. <laughs> these are people. These are spiritual leaders that he's dealing with. That's training the people, not spiritually, but out of their souls. Through laws and rules and regulation. He said all of them were thieves and robbers. Because they climbing up the wall. Are y'all with me? And so he says. The thief come is not. But to what? Steal. And to what? Kill. And to do what? Destroy. Listen to that. And so everywhere you go all over the church. We, we said. Well the devil comes but to steal, kill and destroy. All over the church. I'm everywhere I'm hearing I hear that stuff. And I just go, oh father, I did, I can't fix it. <laughs> I just I ain't got time to be even fixing it. I ain't even trying to fix it. I'm not gonna even deal with it. I'm not I, I'm not Lord, I'm not dealing with it, right? No, you're not. But he was never talking about the devil. There is a place in here where he is, and I and you're gonna see it in a moment. But that's not where he was talking about him. And the place that, we, that he's talking about, we don't even reference. So who is these people? They are shepherds that are sheep rustlers. Oh, you ain't hear me. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Well, how do I know it? He says, why? I am come that you might have I can hear you live live Zoe Z-O-E Zoe and that you might have life more abundantly so these people came to steal them away from Christ to kill their creativity and ability and to destroy the relationship with the father and with each other that's what they came to do and these shepherds that we don't understand are the thieves and the robbers because they're leading us away from the spirit into the things of the soul into the things of ourselves that we're not being taught the way of God we're not being dealt with in the deeper inner man we're not being changed we've been told all the good stuff rather than told how yet you are wretched yes preach that word yes 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 he said, these are thieves and robbers. Now, here you go, verse 11. St. John chapter 10, verse 11 says, I am the good shepherd. Hey, somebody. The good shepherd gives his what? Okay, the word life there is the word suke. The word life there is the word suke. What is the word suke? G5590 is Zuke, and what is it? So, it is the Greek, is a Greek name for soul. Jesus says, I give my soul for the sheep. Are you hearing me? Okay, very important. He said, I give my, why is he giving his soul for the sheep? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Come on, why? The shepherd gives his life in abundance. Zoe life, not bios life. He's not dealing with his, his body, his bios. He's not dealing with biological life. He's dealing with the Zoe life. He says, so there's a new life that's coming, but I'm going to give my suitcase so that can happen. Now watch this. Watch this. But he that is a hireling, and not the shepherd. Notice a new person showed up here. Whose own the sheep are not. See it's who? Who does he see coming? The wolf. Now here he's talking about the devil. <laughs> or something other than people. He's identified it. <laughs> 
Wolves don't steal. Wolves just eat and destroy. Are you with me? They just kill. They don't steal nothing. Are you with me? You got to get this. So watch now. He said, the highland run when the wolf comes. What did the wolf do? What did he say he does? He does what? He catches them and what? Scatters them. Why? Because when the wolf comes and catches one, the rest of the sheep going to run. He said, the highland runs too. The highland runs too. This is, not, this is not the porter. Remember, the porter opened the door for the shepherd. Okay? Here is the, here is the threat of the enemy. This is the threat of the enemy. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and carries not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know is my sheep and I am known of them. Look at, look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 25. Go there. Chap, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 25. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 25. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 25. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 25. It says, For ye were as sheep, what? Going astray, but are now returned unto who? The shepherd and bishop of your what? See what I'm telling you? Wow. The shepherd and bishop of your souls. Who's that? Jesus. Jesus is the shepherd and bishop of your souls. So there are five people in that story. There's five people in that story. Thieves and robbers, the wolf and hirelings. But the one that's important for us is number five, anointing all over that, right? The shepherd who is Jesus. Thieves and robbers are people who came before him. We could put this person here as the enemy that is catching and scattering the sheep. And this person right here is somebody who is in the ministry who will move out. Matter of fact, I left somebody off because I didn't put the porter up there. The porter, I could put the porter up there. You could put the porter up there too. It's number six. The porter is somebody that, watch this, is now led by God into leading the sheep or covering the sheep who is a good overseer. Different between the porter and the hireling is the porter opens the door for the shepherd. So watch this now. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. This is really interesting. Those, look at the thieves and the robbers. Most leadership that you have in the earth today in the kingdom comes under the two headings. A porter or a hireling. Did you hear what I just told you? Why? The porter ushers Jesus in to the ministry by way of the spirit. The hireling is doing his own thing and running when there's troubles. You got to hear what I just told you. Okay? There is not everybody that's letting Jesus into their churches. You ain't hear me. Everybody's not opening the door for Jesus. Everybody's not trying to let Jesus have his own way. Everybody's not doing that. Every leader's not doing that. I'm just telling you. Okay? They're functioning as hirelings. Well, we don't ever identify them. I'm not identifying anybody. I'm not calling anybody's name. I'm not, I'm not referencing anybody. I'm telling you what they are. You make your own conclusions however you want to make those. But I'm not coming against anybody in the body of Christ at all. I'm telling you that's what's happening. And you can tell them real easy. Okay? It's real easy to tell them. Okay? But that's it. So are you, are you tracking with me? Okay? So... The problem with this is, watch this, when, okay, man, I got so much more to tell you. <laughs> verse 15, go to verse 15. Uh, let, me, let me stay on this. Let me not, because I'm losing time. Verse 15 says, as the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father, and lay down my suke, my life, for the sheep. Did you see that? And other sheep I have, now notice this, which are not of this foe, 
Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and they shall be of be one foe and one shepherd. Who is he talking about? You. You talking about Gentiles? You talking about you? You are those. Amen. Now watch this. Verse seventeen. Got so much more, but let's get this in. Whew. Man, I ain't nowhere near this. It says, therefore does my father love me because I lay down my what? Suke. My soul that I might do what with it? Take it again. Wow. So he says, I'm going to lay it down so I can take it up again. I, I'm on, on my way to tell you something in a moment. In verse 18 says, no man take it from me. Notice this. But I do what? I lay it down when? Of myself. I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. This commandment I have received of my father. What? Why? John 6 and 38. I'm sent down from heaven not to do my own will but the will of the one who sent me. So submission to the Lord and to the leadership is found in verse 18. Willingly lay down one's life. Most people always watch. It, watch. Most people always have a reason why not to do that. We got reason why we ain't going to lay down our life. You have to take your own life. You got to take your own soul and lay it down. You must, you can't, watch this, listen, God's not going to do it for you. That's right. That's right. That's the thing I want you to understand. God's not going to, God's not going to come in your life and start dealing with, by the way, you don't want him to. Say that. Listen. Say that. You don't want him to. The Bible said fall on the rock or the rock will fall on you. And if the rock falls on you, what it does it do? It crushes you and grinds you to powder. Because he said, if you fall on a rock, you shall be broken. Okay? So the brokenness is better than to be crushed. Okay? So you don't want him to, you don't want him to deal with you. Hello? Amen. But you want to fall on him. And you got to, you got to volitionally fall on the rock. And so in this time of this mosmos, you got to be saying to God, God, I, I want you. I fall on you. God, I want you. Come on, God. I lay down my life. I lay down my soul. I lay down my, I lay down my opinions. I lay down my rights. I lay down my attitude. I lay down all of it. I lay, God, I lay it down. I'm laying it down so that I might, come on, be yours fully. Why? Because I'm entering in by the door. I am a sheep. I only want to hear your voice. Yes. 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 Yes, God. Yes. See, the music playing in your head can interfere with you hearing the voice of the Lord. Yes. 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 So you don't know if the interf that is interfering with God speaking something to you. So you can't allow it to keep playing. Yes, that's good. But it doesn't have to only be music. It can be the worries of the day. <laughs> it can be the worry that is constantly going over and over in your mind. You wake up with it. You go to sleep with it. You all, wait, you all day long and say, man, what am I going to do? Don't know what I'm going to do. This is just worrying me, worrying me, worrying me. Even though God said be anxious for nothing, but with, with, with prayer and supplication, let your request be made known unto God. You don't care. You're just constantly worrying. You're constantly in anxiety. And that's just like the music playing and you won't shut it off and you won't deal with it. It could be, what is this? It could even be something that is really good where you're advancing in, in life, business, ministry, whatever, and that thing is all you're thinking about. That's all you're thinking about. All you can think about is how I'm going to do this. You, you up late at night thinking about how I'm going to get it done. You, you wake up early in the morning and start thinking about it again, how I'm going to get it done. And you don't tell your soul, shut up. Because you think that's okay. <laughs> you think, okay, ain't no wrong with this because I'm advancing. This is going to advance ministry. This is going to advance my business. This is going to make me better off, but it's in the way. You don't know if God's speaking. Wow. Wow. And you have to say, shut up. Why? Because if I got a situation like that, what do I need to do? I need to apply the word to it. Yes. I don't need to try to fix it. I just need to apply the word to it. Come on, I need to find me some scripture, yes. glory to God, that I now apply to my life. And I just don't even believe that I'm on this page. 
I really don't. I'm trying to tell you. I, I have so much to tell y'all tonight that I was hoping I'd get through. And we have the we needed to go to the Golden Calf. We needed to go to Sinai and Zion. We needed to go to Haggai and Sarah. And, and y'all asked too many questions. And I can't get there. It's so much more. Anybody with me so far? Look, guys, look, we, we, <laughs> we're more than halfway. Um, you got to do work. If you ain't learned nothing tonight at all, you got to get your three scriptures. You can't wait to get your three scriptures. Get your three scriptures. Go to work on yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. Watch yourself, though. As soon as you're given, the Bible says, once you are illuminated, it is then that you will fight a great fight of affliction. It is then that your soul will give you other alternatives. Wow. Wow. Your soul is very smart. It is the reason why it knows that it does not want to be Mary's most. It says, I want to keep the control. It knows it doesn't supposed to have control, but it doesn't want to ever relinquish control. And as long as you let it have it, it will just have a living life on its own. And when you don't know it, it took over. So it's interesting too. <laughs> I tell you this, I was um so I was in here this night and I came in here to pray and we were playing some medication on music. And I'm Mm, on my knees praying and, every, and I caught myself twice in places that I was not supposed to be I said uh uh that's not where I'm supposed to be see if you don't catch it see once you get start getting married once you start checking yourself you go what, are you my you, you wonder twice on me <laughs> matter of fact it took me on a trip y'all don't know what I'm talking about my soul took me on a trip so fast I was on a trip and I was in another city Y'all, that's how fast it can take you. And I was supposed to be praying. I said, okay, that's what you think you're going to do? I know what else works on you. We're going to worship God in here. That's why I said, put on some worship music and we going in there. And we went in there. Did we go in there? We went up in there. Because look, the worship, remo worship removes you from your soul because your soul can't worship only your spirit wow. Wow. your soul can enjoy the worship your soul knows all the songs and all that and the melody and all that but it's your spirit that's leading you into worship of God because you have to turn your attention away from everything on the earth and set your affections on things above not on things in the earth hello somebody and sometimes when your mind's wandering, just enter into divine worship. Come on, put, put on the worship songs and begin to just worship God and watch your mind has to come back into alignment with yourself. But you got to know that it happened. Because if you don't know it happened, you'll be, <laughs> you'll be way down the road somewhere and never get to where you were trying to get to. Live stream, thank you so much for being here, man. It's so much more. I love you for being with me. Thank you so very much. I bless you in Jesus' mighty name. You are the blessings of heaven to me. I appreciate you. Bye-bye. How you doing? Y'all good? All right, take out your phones real quick because I should have done this before we start. Take out your phones real quick. Go to Bethel Facebook page. Go there real quick. Come on, take your phone. Go to Bethel 